In this video, I want to show you five different books for five different math subjects. And what makes these books special is that they are Dover books. So Dover is a book publishing company that reprints old books and sells them at very, very affordable prices. So we'll try to leave links in the description to all of these books in case you want to check them out. Also, I should mention that I specifically picked these particular books from my collection to show you because I think these are all really good books for beginners. So you can actually buy these books and read them and learn some mathematics. And if you're wondering why there is a horse head in this video, I just decided to include it because I thought it was really cool. So I bought this at an estate sale long ago. Yeah, it's just a really cool horse head. Looks pretty fierce. So the first book I wanna show you is this one here. It's called Applied Complex Variables and it's by John W. Detman. And I just wanna make a comment in general about Dover books. And that's the size. This is a really good size for a book. So you can carry it around with you and read it anywhere. This book has everything you will learn in a complex variables course and more. So you can find all of that in this little book, which I think is pretty cool. By the way, I say little book, but this book is actually pretty thick. This book is written in a really great way because you can read it and understand it. I read this book when I was taking Calculus One or sometime around that era. And I had no problems with the beginning of the book. It wasn't until I got farther in the book uh, that it gets a little bit more complex. But I think most people can pick up this book and start reading it. My fondest memory of this book was taking it with me to the dentist. And I took this one because it was one of the first Dover books that I ever bought. And the size is perfect. So you can take it with you when you go places. So if you ever have to go somewhere and you have to wait for something, you can just take this book with you and sit down and read and understand what you can. This book does have some serious mathematics in it. So even though it is readable from the very beginning, once you get further into the book, it's going to require some higher level math. For example, to really understand this proof, you'd wanna have some experience with proofs in particular, maybe a little bit of advanced calculus, but it's not too bad once you know some higher level math you can make it this far into the book. And you can read certain portions of the book without knowing that higher level math. That's what I think is great about this book. And that's what I really appreciated it about this book is that I was able to read it barely knowing any calculus and I was able to make it decently far and I learned some stuff. Overall, I think this is a great book to have in your collection. Again, it's Applied Complex Variables and this is the one by Detman. This next book is called Number Theory and it's by George E. Andrews. And so I bought this book because it was a really good price and I thought, hey, let me buy it. So I bought it and I've had it ever since. I've actually never taken number theory and I had read another number theory book before this one, the one by Long. And I think this one's pretty good. It reads pretty well. It's a nice introduction to the subject. Another pro of this book is that it does have hints and answers to a lot of the exercises. Now, not all, but some of the exercises do have answers. And that is a huge plus. Not all old books have hints and answers in them. Here's a super quick look at the contents. You can see it covers a lot of number theory in this little book. So despite the size of the book, it does cover a lot of mathematics, which I think is really cool. And it's one of the nice things about Dover books. You're getting an old book that's been reprinted in a good size at an affordable price. And they cover tons of math. Again, this one is Number Theory by George E. Andrews. Pretty good little book. This is a book that I've read big portions of, and I got this when I was taking calculus. It's called Essential Calculus with Applications by Richard A. Silverman. I think this is a fantastic book on calculus for beginners. It reads excellent, it's super affordable, it's a good size, and I think it's worth getting if you are taking calculus and want to learn more. One of the things I remember really appreciating about this book was the very first chapter where it talks about mathematical background. This is something that you know, I didn't really see in the modern calculus books that I was looking at when I was first learning calculus. This is a little bit more old school, it's got a whole chapter on background. Then it goes to differential calculus, differentiation as a tool, integral calculus, integration as a tool, and then functions of several variables. So pretty cool book. It even has selected hints and answers. Here you can see some of the hints and answers to the problem. So it has answers to quite a few of the questions. Not all of them, but certainly quite a few, which I think make this a really good book for self-study. Here you see some of the exercises and they're really not that difficult. That is probably one of the downsides of this book. I feel like the exercises in this book are lacking compared to modern textbooks. So if you're taking an actual calculus class, you know, you're gonna need more practice than what's in this book. So I think it's still worth picking up because you get a different explanation, you get a different treatment, 
And you do get some unique exercises that you won't find in modern books as well. But I feel like the level of difficulty for some of the routine problems is lacking. Modern books, they seem to have more like drill problems where they'll give you like a bunch of hard derivatives and a bunch of hard integrals. And I feel that's missing from this book. Here we can see some more examples of the problems. Here we have to differentiate. So part A, we would use the chain rule. B would be the quotient rule, and then C and D also some chain rule action going on. And here's a look at the rest of the exercises for this particular section. So you, you do get some good problems, and then you have some proofs here as well. So modern books just tend to have more problems, which are really good and useful for learning mathematics because you learn a lot of math by actually doing math. Overall, I think this is a great book for anyone who is taking calculus. It's going to give you different explanations than what you would see in modern books, and it is super affordable. I'll leave a link in the description. It's called Essential Calculus with Applications, and it's the one by Silverman. This next book I was reading just the other day, I think it was been maybe two weeks, and it's called Introductory Discrete Mathematics, and it's by Bala Krishnan. And I've had this book for quite some time, and it's actually really good. Um, it has really clean explanations, and I think it's one of the better discrete math books out there. Let me show you the contents. Here's a super quick look at the contents. It starts with set theory and logic, and then it goes into combinatorics. I have read this entire chapter. Generating functions, recurrence relations, I've read some of this. Graphs and digraphs, more on graphs and digraphs. Trees and their applications. Spanning tree problems, shortest path problems, what is MP completeness? And it has answers to some of the problems in the book. Here you can see the answers to selected exercises and you see it has quite a few answers. I mean, look at all the problems it works out. It looks like it has almost all of the odd ones, not quite. So very, very useful. Even has some even problems thrown in there. So quite a bit in terms of answers, which is really, really helpful when you're using this for self-study. Now, this is not a perfect book. You're going to read it and you're going to get stuck. Certain sections you might have to read more than once. And of course you can skip certain sections if you want to. I do like, however, how this book is laid out. It has like really nice little sections. For example, here it talks about the domain and the range of a function. And it gives you some examples. Let's turn the page here. And then it talks about surjections, injections, and bijections. Then the inverse, so it goes pretty quickly and it covers a lot of mathematics. If you look at the size of this book and compare it to the size of some of the other discrete math books out there, um, this is not nearly as thick, but it still has a ton of information, which I think is really incredible. I think this is a fantastic book. I think Bella Krishnan did an excellent job. Um, it's probably one of the better discrete math books out there. And again, it's not perfect. You're going to get stuck, but since it's so affordable, I think it's worth it. And that's actually why I bought it. I was taking discrete math long ago and I wanted another book. So I went online on Amazon and I found it and I thought, hey, this is a good price. It's got good reviews, let me buy it. And I did use it as a supplement when I was taking discrete math. This last book is absolutely incredible. This one is called Introduction to Topology, and this one is by Gamelin and Green. And this is probably one of the best topology books out there. And the reason I say that is because it has answers to, I'm pretty sure, all of the problems. Let's take a look. Yep, check it out. Here's section four, base for a topology. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it has eight full solutions which is pretty amazing. I mean, those look like proofs. Let's take a look at section four to see if there's actually eight problems. Here is section four. We've got one, two, three, four. And let's turn the page to take a look here. Five, six, seven, eight. Yep, so it has answers to every single problem, including the proofs. That is extremely rare for a topology book. And that's why I think this is a must have for anyone who is planning on studying topology. Here's a quick look at the contents. I do love that it starts with metric spaces. Then it goes into more general topological spaces. Then homotopy theory. And let me just turn the page. And then we have higher dimensional homotopies. So pretty concise book, but it does cover a ton of mathematics. And again, you have solutions to those selected exercises. This book is extremely well written and extremely well organized. And I think it's one of those must have books for anyone who is trying to learn topology. Now it's not a perfect book because topology is, you know, tough to learn. You're going to have to work hard to try to, you know, reproduce these proofs on your own and understand everything that is being taught in this book. However, you do have full solutions to all of the exercises and the exercises themselves are actually extremely good problems. 
So it's really everything you would want in a book. It's got correct, clean, organized explanations, nice exercises with full solutions. The only thing missing is, you know, the effort that you have to put in to actually learn the subject. I can't say enough good things about this book. I've had it for years and I think it's probably one of the best apology books I have. It's called Introductions to Apology by Gamelin and Green. And again, it's a Dover book, which makes it great because you can get it really inexpensively. So those are five books that I have that I think are really good. They're all Dover books. That means they're all really affordable. And I'll try to leave links in the description in case you wanna pick some up. I really like the size of all of these books. They're really easy to pick up and take with you when you're on the go. They're affordable. Um, really nothing negative to say about them, except that sometimes, depending on the book, they don't really lay flat. For example, okay, that's a bad example, but <laughs> let me just go over here. There we go. You see, well, okay, so it does lay flat. You see, so sometimes you have issues with the book uh, not laying flat. I should also mention that despite these books being paperbacks and me personally loving hardcover books, these are actually really good in terms of the quality of the materials used to make the books. So I haven't had any problems with any of my Dover books falling apart and I have many more Dover books. I just picked these five because I think these are all really, really good. Those are five awesome books that I think are worth having. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck and take care.